All right, so in this video, I want to go over my own process that I go through to create some stylized foliage. In this example, we're just going to make a little uh, clump of grass. So I always like to start in Photoshop, and here I'm just going to literally kind of draw out my grass textures. So the little setup I have is I'm on a 1024 by 1024 square, and I got a background layer just for clarity and then the one I'm actually drawing on is a, just a plain transparent layer that way I'm you know the point of doing it in this method is that I can draw out my grass shape I could draw out my grass shape and because I'm on a transparent layer you know I'll already have my transparency built in which just makes it all the more easier for me because this is not another map I have to make. So when I'm doing grass, I just like to start, you know, with a, find a brush you like with some nice pressure sensitivity so you can get some nice tapered lines. And then just going around, drawing some different shapes or different size lines. I generally like to work with grass in like a kind of triangular shape. So we got the shorter, shorter pieces on the end and then it gets taller as we get to the center and I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit so once you got you know your base shape in for a stylized t texture stylized grass I like to now go ahead over to my layers here and if I lock the transparency now I can draw on this without um, you know drawing in the background so then I'll go grab like a kind of an airbrush a big soft round brush and I can start using a lighter value to highlight the tips of the grass and then I can use a darker value to kind of put the bottom of the grass in shadow and then I can bring my brush size down a bit um, and turn on some pressure stuff and then I can get in here I'll turn on pressure size too and I can start to um, you know just draw in some shadows to kind of add a little bit of detail to the grass you know kind of make them just give them a little extra detail so you can do you know do this to any degree you want but for grass something that's you know on the ground scattered all over the place you don't necessarily need to have it to be very fancy so I'll even go ahead and grab an even lighter value and highlight a couple a couple spots so this method you know it's going to give give us a very stylized piece of grass but you know you can you can do this for however you want it to look so now i got my piece of grass i'm going to go ahead and transform it kind of fill out the square a little more fill out the square a little more um you know if we were making this like a final texture you would typically you know make a couple variations so maybe you have four total variations one in each quadrant and you like switch them up between this kind of average sized one maybe you make one with mostly short blades and then one with a couple really tall ones and then like another variation of a middle one that way you have a variety of grass pieces to work with but for this example we'll just use this now we'll go ahead and save it out so before I do that I'm going to go ahead and hide my background layer so that we just have our texture on a transparent background I'll go file I'll save we're just going to save it right here as a PNG and I did one earlier I'm just going to save over it save yep okay so now I got my texture so next I like to head over into Maya where I'm going to put my little grass clump together. So to get started, I'll start with a plane. Oh, it's wrong, but uh, I'll start with a plane. I'll go ahead and knock down the 
subdivision levels to one. I'm just going to start with the square. Then first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and select my object, assign a material, and then in this material, in the blend two, I'm going to plug in the texture I just created in Photoshop, plug it into the color channel. That way I can kind of preview what my grass might look like um, as I'm creating it. So I'll grab my grass. And now you can see we have some grass to look at. So I can get rid of that for now. So first thing, so we got our grass. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so it's facing the right way. Then I'm going to go to the oh, come on my front view, uh, rotate it so it's facing the front. And then I'm going to move it so that the bottom of the grass is kind of just intersecting the ground plane. So the middle of the world kind of represents the ground plane. And the next step is we're going to move, change the shape of this card to match the shape of our grass. So, you know, usually you could just grab them and drag them up. And as we can see, it's not adjusting our UVs. That's because in our tool settings for our move tool, if we scroll down, we have preserve UVs turned on. And if we open our UV editor, we can kind of see what it's doing. So it's updating the UVs in real time to match our viewport, which is a very handy thing to do because now we can add more subdivisions to our grass. And we can just go ahead and grab these vertices and move them into shape. So something like this will usually work pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and add one more subdivision this way. Why not one more that way as well? So this is our base card. So now I'm going to go perspective. Here it is. So next we got to kind of build this into a clump. So first thing we'll do is we're going to add some base kind of deformations to this. So I'm just going to grab the middle here drag it out, drag the sides, drag them out, so that we have a kind of half moon card thing. And then I'm going to grab this top layer, put them that way, put them that way. That way it's like subtly, you know, like curved out a little bit. So now this is what we will build our grass from. I'm going to go ahead and put the pivot to the origin, and then how I like to work is very visually, so I'll make a duplicate of this, move it off to the side. That way I kind of have all my building blocks, and then I'll bring, drag them in and combine them together. So now uh, we're going to start building our little clump of grass. So I'll just duplicate this, duplicate it a couple times, rotate it around. I got like three of them here. Maybe I'll duplicate again, then I'll shrink it down a little bit. So we got a little variance in size. And I'll drag these little guys around to different areas. And all the while, when you're figuring out what shape to do, just, just know that there's going to be a lot of them. So usually some kind of like little shape like this, you know, it kind of ends up like a triangle will usually do a pretty good job blending in. And I'm just going to add one more of these kind of right in the middle here, kind of intersecting everything. And there we go. It's a little grass clump that we like. So I'm going to highlight all these, I'm gonna group them together. I'm going to duplicate that group, and I'm going to drag it off to the side. That way, if I ever want to make another clump that's a little different, I can just use this as a starting point and be able to access each of the cards individually. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to select them all. We're going to combine them together. Then we're going to select them. And then we're going to go to Display, Polygons, Vertex Normals. And this will show us the vertex normals of the object. And right now they're kind of pointed all which way. 
Now, for a foliage piece, especially grass, a little trick you can do is select your object and then go to, let's see, Mesh Display, Set Vertex Normals. And if we go ahead and change these to 0, 0, 1 and apply, this will change the direction of all the vertex normals pointing straight up, which will help make our the display of our grass much nicer. So that's a little trick, you know, a little way to make it work. Because, you know, as is, it could work with just, just this, but, you know, keeping mind of the vertex normals can really make it look a little nicer. So after we adjust the vertex normals, we can select our object. I'm going to put the pivot back to the origin. And we're going to go ahead and file export selection as an FBX. And I have one from earlier. I'm just going to save over it. Export selection. And now we have our texture created and our um, mesh created. So let's head into Unreal. So I'm in my foliage folder here. I'm just going to import everything into here just for ease. So I'm going to go import. I'm going to import my grass demo FBX and my color map. Press open. Press import. You may have to, like if we look right now, our grass is kind of small. It'll work for now, but play around with the import scale to get it to display the right size. So now we got our mesh in here. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit and move it over into the light. Now we got our mesh in here and we got our texture map. So we need to set up a material. So we'll just make a new material. Open it up. We can drag our texture right in here. And then we're going to select the new material node and then we're going to go down to the blend mode on the right side in the details or left side in the details. We're going to change it to masked. This will give us access to the opacity mask. So all we have to do is we have to plug in the RGB to the base color, the alpha into the opacity mask, and we have that alpha available to us because of how we created our texture in Photoshop. Then we can save, and now we got ourselves a really simple texture setup. Um, you could play with any of these other uh, inputs if you so desired. So now that we got our material, <clears throat> we're going to move this off to the side. And now we can drag our material onto our grass. So one thing we forgot to do is we forgot to make our material two-sided. So if we check that on, save again. We now have a two-sided little, <coughs> little piece of grass. So we use the material in this case to make it two-sided, but with foliage, there's a little trick we can do, and this is especially true for grass specifically, to kind of basically will mimic the two-sided effect, but in doing so, it'll basically give us an actual two-sided mesh that will then display our textures nicely on both sides. So if we leave this here and we go back to Maya, we got our mesh here. And I'm going to display polygons, turn the vertex normals off because we don't need them anymore. Um, if we have our object here, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it, move it off to this side. Oh, I'm just going to select this one, duplicate it, move it off to the side. So if we take our mesh, if we duplicate it, okay, we leave it exactly where it is. We go select all of the faces and then reverse the normals on the faces. What this will leave us with are two identical objects, same textures, same UVs, same mesh, directly on top of each other, but their face normals are facing different directions. And what this leaves us with is basically mimicking the effect of the two-sided um, geometry. So if I now combine those two meshes together, so I had two meshes selected, Reset the pivot, clear the history, freeze transformations, and then do file, please. Export selection, 
then I'm just going to save directly over my old one. Export, yes. So I saved over it, and then I'll go back to Unreal. And then I go ahead and import. Import that same FBX I just saved over. It'll ask me if I want to update and overwrite. I'll say yes, please. And now, if we look at it, so it'll look a little weird, but if we go back to our material and turn off two-sided again, save it. Now, we have a mesh that's displaying much nicer. And we'll cooperate with, you know, our lighting pretty well. So this is a great way I like to make, you know, simple stylized foliage. And we used Maya for this um, demo, but you can absolutely do everything we did in Maya in Blender as well. The main tools you would have to look for are how to redirect your vertex normals pointing up and how to reverse the faces, the normals of the faces. So you can do the duplicate mesh, reverse the faces on one, and then you know, combine them together and export that out. But, so this is a great, you know, way to do foliage uh, and, you know, is a very helpful tool to have.